Hello! Are you sitting comfortably? Then I will begin with today's short story. Little Tinker by Vivian Hampshire The day that Tinker turned up in my back garden, unannounced and decidedly bedraggled, was otherwise unremarkable. I had sat around after a late breakfast, still in my dressing gown, skimming through the newspaper and wondering why I bothered still to buy one when all that was in it was more and more trouble in the world and pages of celebrity gossip. Then I'd had another cup of tea, pulled on my old gardening clothes and wandered outside to do some much needed deadheading. I was bored. Having accepted an early retirement package three months earlier, the alternative being re relocation to the new company offices almost 200 miles away, I still hadn't found anything to fill my days. It was hard, after 35 years of getting up to the sound of an alarm, dressing for the office and catching the train at H20 every morning, to find myself with time on my hands and absolutely no structure in my daily life at all. My sister Lorna insisted that I would get used to it soon enough and that there were huge benefits to be gained from being your own boss, as she laughingly called it. Holidays at the drop of a hat, meeting friends for coffee, having a line whenever I fancied one and not having to go out at all when it snowed. She made it sound like I'd been missing out on something wonderful all these years. The reality was that I missed my old life, the people, the sense of purpose, the responsibility. Rattling about at home with all the housework done and not even a good book to read until my next trip to the library, I felt more than a little sorry for myself. They say that life has a habit of giving you what you need when you least expect it, don't they? That you don't have to go looking for luck if it's meant to be it will find you. And that's how it was with Tinker, snipping away with my secateurs, humming to break the silence, and with my mind miles away in an office that no longer existed. I didn't hear his little whimpering cries at first. In fact, if he hadn't jumped out of the way as I bent down to lop off a few dead brown leaves hanging close to the ground, I could have easily have had his tail off. Poor little mite. <laughs> I wasn't familiar with kittens growing up. There had been a succession of family dogs until it found a hole in a fence and disappeared without trace a tortoise called Timmy we'd inherited from an elderly neighbour. Cats were a mystery. I admired them for their haughtiness and independence, the fact that they didn't need constant attention or twice daily walks and the way they pretty much looked and took care of themselves. But this little fellow didn't look capable of taking care of himself at all. He was small. I judged him to be only a couple of months old, and when I picked him up tentatively, in case he decided to lash out with his claws, he fitted easily into the palm of my hand, with just his front paws hanging over the side. He was mainly black, with a splodge of white under his tummy, and at the tip of one ear, and he was thin. Running my finger down his neck, I could feel his tiny bones through the matted fur and saw what looked like fleas hopping around his neck. It was obvious he had been outside for some time. Well now, young Tinker, I said, speaking softly to make sure I didn't frighten him. Where have you come from? I have no idea why I called him Tinker, but the name seemed to suit him. Let's take you inside, shall we, and find you something to eat. I carried him through to the kitchen, surprised to realise how quickly he had accepted me. By the time I sat down at the table and spooned some tuna into the saucer still left out from my earlier cup of tea, he was already rubbing his head against my arm and purring fit to burst. He guzzled the tuna down and followed it with a slice of honey roast ham. It was the best I could do at short notice, but he didn't seem to mind. Then he scampered across the kitchen floor and into the lounge, managed to jump up into my favourite armchair and fell fast asleep. 
talk about making himself at home. I had forgotten all about my gardening efforts and turned my thoughts towards what I should do with my unexpected visitor when he woke up, get him checked over at the vet, try to find out if anyone locally might have lost him or take him to some kind of rescue centre. The last thing on my mind was to keep him, but keep him I did. The vet looked over him the next morning, confirmed he was indeed a male, sold me some flea treatment and searched for a microchip that wasn't there. The receptionist put a found kitten notice on the board and directed me to a website for lost and found pets. I popped him back into the cardboard box I had used to transport him here and then took him home where he promptly went straight back to sleep, giving me time to dash to the supermarket and stock up on cat food before he woke up again. I had bought a plastic litter tray and a bag of litter while I was there. Up till now we'd got by with a sprinkling of garden soil on a pile of old newspapers, but it wasn't ideal, and if I wanted to keep my kitchen floor clean, then these things would have to be done properly. It wasn't until three days later that it occurred to me Tinker had actually moved in. Not as a temporary guest, but forever. Nobody had reported him missing. Nobody responded to the notice at the vets. I hadn't got round to calling the rescue centre. What would they do? Anyway, try to find him a new home and keep him in a cage until they did. Tinker didn't need a new home. He had found one with me. After that, life became a lot less boring, with a little furry face nudging me awake every morning and a warm body curled up on my lap every time I sat down. It felt good to have someone to care for and to talk to. The house felt less empty and I found myself looking forward to the future and making plans again. I thought you didn't like cats, Lorna said on her next visit. I never said I didn't like them. I just never had a lot to do with them before. She had brought her grandchildren with her. Lily and Sean were eight-year-old twins, bursting with energy and curiosity. I hadn't had a lot to do with children in the past, either. Never having any of my own. But I'd soon come to love these two, as I now pointed out to my sister. That's different, she said. They're not animals. They're family. I looked at little Tinker chasing a ball of wool he'd pulled from my knitting bag and smiled. He wasn't just an animal, he was family too. But it would have been pointless trying to explain that to Lorna. Anyway, I've decided to visit that animal rescue place in Little Oakford. Lorna stopped drinking her tea and put her cup down. What for? I thought you decided to keep him. Well, I have, or more like... He's decided to keep me. Then what do you want to do with animal rescue? Not going to start taking in waifs and strays, are you? Lorna snorted. No, probably not. But if there's one thing this little chap has taught me, it's that no animals should be without a loving home and no lonely person should be without a loving pet. I'm going to volunteer my services and try to do something about matching the two up. I hear they're always looking for volunteers, and with my office experience and time on my hands, it might just suit me. Are you sure you wouldn't rather spend more time in the garden, or write your memoirs or something? Maybe go on a relaxing cruise? <laughs> I laughed. I'm sick of the garden. I've never done anything exciting to write about, and I get seasick just crossing the channel on the ferry to France. I need more purpose in my life, Lorna. Tinker turned up here for a reason. I'm sure of it. Yes, he recognised a soft touch when he saw one. Free food and a comfy bed, I think. I think I would have done the same in the, his position. Oh, you've got Harry and the kids. I watched the twins rolling around the floor with Tinker, slowly twisting the yards of unravelling wool into knots. I would never be able to untangle these knots. Life is different for you. Tinker has filled a hole in mine that I hadn't even realised was there. Maybe I can do the same for someone else. It's worth a try, don't you think? On that note, before she could 
pour cold water on any more of my plans, I gathered up the empty cups and left the room. The rescue centre was much smaller than I had imagined, hidden behind a high wire fence. It consisted of a rather tatty porter cabin with a sign above its creaky door saying, Reception, please come in. An equally dilapidated portable loo and a series of assorted huts and pens arranged higgledy-piggledy across an area hardly bigger than my own back garden. Hello, can I help you? An elderly red-faced woman looked up as I knocked gently and poked my head around the door. Oh, I do hope so, although I was rather hoping it's me who might be able to help you. I'm Jan Roberts. I'd like to find out about offering my services in some way. Just a couple of uh, days a week, maybe. Oh, how lovely. Please do come in and sit down. I'm Rose Gardner. I'm the manager here. Well, manager sounds rather grand. Truth is, I'm a sort of head animal keeper, accountant, fundraiser, and phone answerer all rolled into one. Any help is very much appreciated, I can assure you. You do realise we can't pay. No, 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 of course not. I'm not looking for money, just something useful to do. Uh, recently retired? Yes, how did you guess? Uh, been there, <laughs> done that, Rose laughed. Got the t-shirt, as they say. I was going to like Rose, I could tell. OK, well, let me show you around before you commit yourself to anything. We're quite basic, low on facilities, if you know what I mean, and run off our feet a lot of the time. We're actually totally reliant on voluntary contributions, both of cash and time, but it's very rewarding. I take it you do like animals. Silly question, but it is rather important that you do. Do you have any pets of your own? My mind flipped to Tinker, who I'd left curled up at the end of my bed with a full bowl of meaty chunks awaiting him in the kitchen. I could never have done that with a dog, but my little Tinker was already showing that feline independent streak I'd always admired, and I knew he'd be fine by himself for a few hours. Uh, yes, um, I do, actually. He's the reason I'm here. Let's uh, say that he's managed to open my mind and eyes to a few things lately. Hmm. Rose walked me around each of the outbuildings and introduced me to various cats, dogs, rabbits and hamsters. They don't uh, generally stay here long, she explained. We try very hard to rehome them as soon as we possibly can, but there are many more animals arriving every week, lost, abandoned, no longer wanted, sometimes hurt, mostly every week. But, uh, you know, it's rather heartbreaking to say the least. We often see the occasional wild animal as well, a baby owl or an injured fox. Some was brought us in a swan a while back with a broken leg, she sighed. It can be hard to let them go once we get attached to them, but a good recovery and a forever home is what we're ultimately aiming for, for all of our residents, and in 99% of cases, we achieve it. They stay here well. For as long as they need, I asked. Yes, absolutely. The more I saw, the more I knew I wanted to get involved. So um, what can I do to help? I'm no animal expert, but I'm good with a computer, paperwork, files, and that sort of thing. Well, I'm no office expert, and I'd much rather be out here with the animals, so it seems to me we make a pretty good team. When can you start? I went every Wednesday and Friday after that and soon had the small office running like clockwork, popping outside to help with feeding and dog walking whenever things were quiet or I needed a break from the paperwork. As I was a volunteer, there was no pressure. I could choose my own hours and walk away at any time if I felt like it. Not that I ever did. The rescue centre started to feel like my second home and Tinker was growing bigger and bolder. Every day, he was always there to welcome me at the end of the day. I did worry that he might be lonely, but a beautiful little stray cat called Sherry soon solved that problem for me. Are you sure, Jan? Rose asked when I presented her with the rehoming forms already signed with my own name. It's so easy to get involved with the animals here. Before you know it, you'll want to take all of them home. <laughs> but I was sure. Cherie soon made herself very much at home and being older was quick to take on the role of mother and boss where little Tinker was concerned. Often I would come home to find them curled up together at the end of my bed or sharing a bowl of food nose to nose. 
They really scrapped, although chasing around the place of at high speed volume became a favourite game, then uh, I had to move a few ornaments and vases out of the way each day to make sure that they didn't get broken. Now the cats were happy in each other's company and starting to explore their new garden with easy access through their newly installed cat flap, I felt able to spend more and more time at the centre. I soon added Thursdays to my regular shifts. Thursday was the one day of the week that Simon Gray came in as a volunteer. I'd heard his name, of course, from some of the others, but our paths hadn't crossed before. Now he stood in front of me, wearing an old jacket and green wellies. He had a bag of straw hefted over his shoulder. Uh, pleased to meet you at last, Jan. He shook my hand and laid the straw down. It's, uh, it's you we have to thank for sorting out the office. I understand. So nice to be able to find the right forms and not have to find any way of trying to avoid the filing cabinets and fight my way through the mounds of paper that used to litter the place. You must be some kind of miracle worker. <laughs> I blushed. I might be in my fifties, but compliments were still a surprise. No, 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 not at all. Just organised after years of office work and glad to keep my hand in now that part, that part of my life is over. Um, how about you? Are you retired too? Mm. He nodded. Police force. But I took a retirement a couple of years back. Coming here gets me out into the fresh air. Gives me a bit of exercise. I'm not one for the gym. Far too boring. Thank you. Besides, I like the animals. I used to handle police dogs and always had one at home with me. But since I lost Elsie... Uh, your wife? No, 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 no. Elsie was my last dog. A real beauty. Retired with me, but died just six months ago. Poor thing. No, there's no wife. I've never met the right woman. I saw a lot of Simon after that. He was there every Thursday, working outdoors most of the time. But he'd usually pop into the little cabin for a coffee mid-morning and sit and chat for a while. It was he who told me about the old tortoise that had been just brought in. Someone had found it wandering at the bottom of their garden and didn't know how to look after it. Uh, yep, we'll be happily uh, and very ready and willing to do that for you. What? said the lady. To look after him. Oh, oh OK. Simon had told them, taking the large cardboard box and peering inside. Wow, he's a beauty and no mistake. Simon put the box on the desk in front of me as he drank his coffee. Uh, I'll leave the old fellow here for a short while, if that's OK with you, while I sort him out some p paperwork and proper living quarters and indeed some food. When he'd gone, I looked inside. There was something calming about a tortoise, slow and plodding, as if there was nothing worth hurrying for. This one was big and very distinctive markings on his shell, and he was munching on a cabbage leaf, quite unperturbed about finding himself in this new and <laughs> strange environment. I smiled. He reminded me very much of Timmy, the tortoise we'd briefly had and lost when I was a girl. He had markings just like these. In fact, the more I looked at him, the more I began to convince myself that this was Timmy. But surely that couldn't be, not after 40 years. There were some animal books on the shelves. I'd catalogued them all not so long ago and sorted them into order, according to animal type and breed. It took seconds to lay my hands on the tortoise book, and soon I was absorbed in reading all about these magnificent creatures. Tortoises are one of the longest lived animals. They can live up to 150 years. They don't travel very fast or very far. Uh, Simon, I gabbled. As soon as he came back into the room, I lost a tortoise just like this one once. Do you think it's possible that this could be him? The markings are just the same. Slow down, Jan. Start at the beginning. There's no rush. This one isn't going <laughs> anywhere in a hurry. Oh, I was being silly, of course. There was no way of proving the tortoise's identity of knowing where he had come from or how long he'd been lost. But I knew, just as I had with Cherie, that I had to have him. I want to take him home with me, Simon. Well, wouldn't you like to think about that first? No, no, please don't bother settling him into a pen. I have a huge back garden for him to live in. With the help of this book, I can make sure that he gets 
the right things to eat and a proper shelter to hibernate in and foolproof fencing so we can't escape again. Oh, OK, I know I've got a lot to learn, but if it is Timmy, I feel I owe it to him. And if it isn't? Well, I want him anyway. In that case, if you're sure, we'll get the rehoming forms filled in, run it past Rose, and I will personally escort you both home. I can inspect the garden fence for you and help to unplug any of those gaps. How does that sound? Perfect. But on one condition, which is that you stay for dinner. Lorna almost drops her biscuit as she splutters crumbs in disbelief. Phew! What? she says. I've started dating, I say again. His name is Simon. That's what I thought you said. Well, you are a dark horse, aren't you? I feel Tinker jump up onto my lap. Cherie tries to do the same to my sister. Get down, she says, brushing the cat away. You'll get hairs on my skirt. Oh, she doesn't mean any harm. Oh, honestly, Jan, this house is turning into some kind of menagerie lately. I'm dreading what might turn up next. Which brings me back to what we were just talking about before this. This animal interrupted us. Now, tell me all about this elusive Simon and when am I going to meet him? Any minute now, actually, he's dropping by with Molly. Molly? Who's Molly? Oh, it's his puppy. He's only recently got her from the centre. A sweet little mongrel. Nobody else seemed to want, but we did. We! Oh, so it's already we, is it? I think ahead to this day when we will merge our lives, our homes and our pets together under one very warm and welcoming group. Really? Simon has asked me to marry him. It seems he has met the right woman at last. And I know for certain that I've met the right man. All we have to do now is introduce Molly to Timmy and the cats and get their seal of approval. Hopefully they'll accept her and love her as easily as they did each other. It's always going to be we from now on. <laughs> Lorna, I just can't be alone anymore. This is just so perfect. Lorna looks and rolls her eyes. I pick Tinker up from my lap to rub his little white-tipped ear. If it weren't for him turning up on that unremarkable day, none of the quite remarkable changes that followed would have ever happened. In fact, thanks to this little minx and the joy he has brought into my life, I say, as I hear the doorbell ring, I don't think I will ever feel lonely again. The end.